Hi Crypto Devs and Artists, Liarko here, and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to upload your NFT collections to IPFS in just a fraction of the time that it usually takes, even with an average internet connection. Let's get into it. So first of all, why is uploading to IPFS so painful? Well, there are multiple reasons for that, but the main one is that most of the people are simply just taking the worst path to achieve their goal at least if you're looking for a fast upload process. When you try to upload your files directly from a home connection to a decentralized network, you're probably gonna encounter multiple bottlenecks. Your upload bandwidth, nodes reliability, nodes poor connection, and so on. But you can be smarter than this. Let's see how to do it. Before we start, we are gonna need our metadata and assets ready on our local computer. If you haven't already, you can check out the great videos from Daniel, aka Ashlips, in order to generate some amazing art for NFTs in a very simple way. Once the data is ready, we can jump into the DigitalOcean's dashboard. If you never heard about DigitalOcean, it's a cool cloud service provider and I actually use it for all of my projects, from small websites to big Kubernetes clusters. It is affordable, user-friendly, and you can get 100 bucks of free credit for 60 days, more than enough to power up your next awesome NFT project. I'm gonna leave you a referral link in the description. The first thing that we're gonna need is a virtual server, on which we can run all of our commands. That type of product is called Droplet here, so let's create one. Here we are, a couple of clicks away from getting our virtual server, which will use Ubuntu as our operating system, and we can go for the basic plan and the regular Intel CPUs. As you can see, they start from as low as 5 bucks. My suggestion is to pick one with at least 1GB of RAM more compared to your collection size. Don't worry about the prices, we're not gonna pay 40 bucks for this, it's just 6 cents per hour. It's less than $2 a day, and you can always delete the machine as soon as you complete the upload process. How cool is that? We don't need any block storage option. And I'm gonna choose a region which is near to where I live in order to get the fastest connection possible. You can leave the VPC setting to the default value. And now we get to the authentication. I always suggest going for the SSH keys option because it's much secure and I'm probably gonna make a video about that to show you a lot of things that you can do with that powerful authentication method. But in this case, I'm gonna keep this stuff simple and choose the plain text password. This machine is also temporary and we are gonna delete it as soon as we complete the upload process, so I'm less concerned about security. We are not gonna need any additional option. We can choose a custom name and just create the droplet. The creation process is really quick, and now we have our own virtual server. Let's connect to it. There are many ways to connect to a remote server. In this case, I suggest you to use the CyberDoc client. It's open source and you can download the fully featured version for free. You can also make a donation and get a license for a few bucks. So please consider buying it if you actually make money from using the software. You're gonna support the software development a lot. CyberDoc allows you to connect to almost any kind of remote storage option. In this case, we're going to use SFTP in order to transfer files to our new server. We have to create a new bookmark and input a few things. As I said, the protocol is SFTP. Insert the IP address of your server in the server input. You can copy it from DigitalOcean. The username is gonna be root and the password is the one that you choose earlier. As you can see, you can also select an SSH key in case you went for that option. The first time you access your server, it's gonna ask you to confirm the server fingerprint. I'm not gonna go into details about this, you can simply check to remember the answer and click allow so it won't show you that message again. And here are the files on our server. Let's upload our example assets folder. You can simply drag and drop your folder here 
and the upload process will start. You can see how this is much faster compared to a typical IPFS upload from an average internet connection. And if you have a better connection than mine, it can even be faster. Here I'm uploading about 6 gigabytes of data in 40 minutes, and that's not bad at all. The upload time depends on both your internet connection and also on the collection size, so just wait for it to finish. I also suggest you to rename your folder since that name will be the one shown by the IPFS provider when you upload it. Once done, you can open up a terminal window. You can use whatever terminal app you like, even the system default one. As long as it supports the SSH command, you're gonna be fine. From this window, we're gonna connect to the machine by typing SSH, root, at, and then the IP address of the server. If you're using a plain text password, it's gonna ask for that. Let's insert the password now. And we are in. Here is the folder that we uploaded from CyberDuck. Cool! Now we can run a couple of commands in order to install the software that we need. The first one is called Node.js, together with its package manager, npm. The second one is a CLI tool from Pinata that allows you to upload a complete folder with just a single command. And yes, this is the key. First, we use a remote server with a powerful network in order to upload the files from our local machine. Then, we use the same remote machine to upload all the files to a powerful IPFS provider, Pinata. In this way, we are taking advantage of both services to speed up the whole process. First of all, let's install Node.js and NPM. Now we install the Pinata Upload CLI using npm. Ok, and now we need an authentication token from our Pinata account, and we can create one from the dashboard. Click on your profile picture and then on API keys. Click on New Key, and here I suggest you to select the minimum permissions, so pin file to IPFS from the pinning section and pin list from the data section. Now we specify a name and click on create key. The key type that we need for our purpose is the JWT, so we copy it and we authenticate on the remote server by running a simple command. We use Pinata CLI A and then we enter the JWT token. As long as you get this response authenticated, you did everything correctly. And then the last step. Let's run Pinata CLI U for upload and uh, the name of our folder. The command takes uh, quite a bit to start, but then, as you can see, the process runs extremely fast. As soon as you can see this output here, this means that the upload process is complete and the command starts spinning all the files. It may take some time to complete this operation and unfortunately you're not gonna get any feedback until the end. But be patient, you're gonna love the result. And here it is! As soon as you get this output here, you can go to your Pinata account and customize your pin options. Repeat these steps for the metadata, which is much smaller, and well done! You now have your collection on IPFS. If you think about what we saw here, if you plan this whole process right, you can go from start to finish in maybe 2 hours or even less. So, now you have no excuse not to launch your home collection. Oh, and just to be safe, please remember to revoke your API keys once you finish the whole process. You can always create new ones if you ever need them again. 
Another thing that you should do is also destroying the virtual machine. So you are just gonna pay for the time that you actually used it. Simply go to DigitalOcean's dashboard, click on the dots here, choose destroy and destroy your droplet. And you're done. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any question or anything you would like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and bye.